Today you're going to see what I did to get my Beast custom RC car ready for Ross Around 3 and then what happened on day 1. It was completely epic. So quick recap for anyone new here, I designed and built the Beast last year and since then it's been through 3 Ross Arounds. Round 3 last year ended in total disaster, everything went wrong. But I went back, re-engineered the car, and in 2025 I came back swinging. At round 1 I built up to a personal best of 196 miles an hour. Then at round 2 I smashed my 200 mile hour goal and pushed it even further up to 213. That was a massive step forward and left me asking, where can I possibly go from here? Well, as I said before, the next step had to be the world records. That meant beating 218.47 miles an hour through the traps and 226 on GPS. After round two, I had just five weeks to prepare for round three. And believe me, I used every bit of that time. I had three main projects covering batteries, motors and wheels. I needed to run on 18S. This is what I'd wanted to do at round two, but I hadn't got the extra packs I needed in time. I still ran six packs to give 15S, but I found it was a wiring nightmare. Mike from Onyx and I cooked up a plan to go for three top level 6S 6975 speedrun packs instead, and he made a special order for them, but it was touch and go whether they could be made and shipped from China in time for round three. So I came up with a flexible layout and two possible battery setups, depending on whether the Onyx packs arrived in time. To make space for the new battery setups and save some weight, I designed new speed controller plates that replace the heavy heat sinks. I had these made for me by PCBWay, who as usual did a great job. That shaved off around 600 grams and gave me loads more space in the centre of the car. Amazingly, I got the call that Mike had got the packs a few days before the event, so I could simplify the harness and work with three packs instead of six, a much cleaner setup and possibly one with more potential. Firstly, huge thanks to iFlight who supported me with four motors, allowing me to replace the rewound motor that I knew was a bit weaker than the rest, and having some essential spares for round three. At round two, the motors were getting hot from the high currents I'm running. I had an idea of adding a fan between the motor and the wheel to give active motor cooling. In testing, I found that it worked, but then so did the wheel on its own. So while this idea didn't make it, I came up with something else using physics to reduce heating while still going faster. Ramping the current up gradually and reducing the time spent at high currents will reduce the heat build up because the heating is proportional to the square of current. It will accelerate slower at the start of the run, but because that's when the car's moving slower, it doesn't waste much of the distance I've got to work within. The question is, will this work in reality? I was fed up of the standard motor on the Contact RC tyre truer I've got. It isn't made to work with wheels of this large diameter and it made it painful to true down wheels. So I cooked up a plan to overpower it with a 5692 Surpass Hobby motor and a spare vesk from my beast car. My crazy idea worked and allowed me to shred tyres with abandon. The reason for doing this is that I wanted to go down on tyre diameter to reduce the amount of foam trying to rip itself off the wheel. I went from 99mm down to 94mm and the OP tyre truer helped me do that. The smaller radius also gives me more driving force, boosting acceleration. I was super pleased with how I evolved my car in this short space of time. I packed in more power with the 18S of Onyx packs saved around 200 grams of weight and neatened things up. In terms of goals, I wanted to replicate the 70 mile hour increase in speed I got between Ross Arounds 1 and 2. So on top of my PB of 213 miles an hour, giving me the slightly ambitious target of 230 miles an hour. But based on my spreadsheet simulations, it looked like this might be possible, depending on what current I could run without damaging the motors. 230 miles an hour would also make my car officially the fastest in the world.
Hi, I'm back on the runway for Rossa round three, day one. It's quite breezy at the moment, but hopefully that's all right. It's blowing straight up the runway, so it'll actually be a nice tailwind. Have a look at the windsock behind me. I can find it, where is it? Yeah, the windsock is blowing almost horizontally. Everyone's just getting set up, so I'll just quick pan around of that. Everyone's just setting up over there. And uh, it's looking like pretty good conditions overall. A little bit windy at the moment, but no problem. My goal for the event, new personal records and maybe even a world record. We'll have to see how, how it goes. Yeah. When I got there, things didn't go entirely smoothly. I had the new Onyx LiPos, but they were slightly bigger than expected. Even though I'd pre-drilled the chassis, they just didn't fit. After some fiddling, I managed to get the side packs in by removing some buckles. And by rearranging the straps, I squeezed the middle pack in too. And once I'd soldered the connectors on and we were ready to roll, I felt a lot more relaxed. My first run, at about 1.30 in the afternoon, was really meant to be a warm-up on some used Contact 40 Shore tyres. Uh, yeah, it, it, it might be a PB, but I don't think it'll be a WR sort of thing. Yeah, it's on its way, yeah. Yes! 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 But the beast went straight, clean, and pulled 218 miles an hour. Yeah! That's basically equaling the current world record on the very first run. Oh, yes! That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Yes! How strange is that? Thank you, yeah. Cheers. That was an alright warm up run anyway. <laughs> World's fastest drone. Road drone. Yeah. There's not much of a drone left in it, <laughs> apart from the motors. It's got the drone motors in it still. I was absolutely buzzing and it was a huge confidence boost. So I got the batteries recharged, fitted a fresh set of BSR purples and lined it up again. Then, just before my second run, it started to drizzle. Not great. I can't see it, oh no. Visibility was terrible. I even completely lost sight of the car at one point when I was trying to turn it around. I can't, I was halfway round and I've lost, lost vision on it. And had to just nudge it around until I spotted it again as a tiny dot way down the runway. Oh, wait a minute, no, I can see it now, yeah. Oh man, I can't, I the rain's going in my eyes, I can't see anything. The car was on the concrete pad at the very end. Rain was blowing in my face, but I went for it anyway. All right, come in then. Right, sending it. And what happened next was unbelievable. Oh man, I can't see. <laughs> Another clean straight run from the beast. And when the speed was read out, the place went wild. Hang on, hang on, hang on. The beast had clocked 234.71 miles per hour through the traps, officially making it the fastest RC car in the world. This is the world record. Yes! Right there! Absolutely unreal. Yes! Dude, you've done it! You've done it! Bits. After all that hard work! <sighs> now where is it? How do you feel? On the right. I didn't see it. Fastest RC car in the world, isn't it? Yeah. 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 yeah.
It was an incredible moment, one I'll never forget. Well done, that was, yeah. well done, well done. Well done. Are you coming in to get it? Thanks for the help. Thanks for the help, man. Well done. Thanks. Amazing. Well, I mean, we Thanks, Dave. We knew it was there. It was there, man. We knew yeah. it. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers. Cruise past. Well done, Steve. Well done. Yeah, thank you. It's amazing, John. World's fastest RC car. Not happening, rewind. That is good. Why are you so locked in? <laughs> Afterwards, I managed to drive the car off the runway while trying to turn it around, so we had to go and retrieve it. And when I got it back, it was in good condition, apart from, as you'd expect, the tyres, which were shredded inside the body after that insane speed. Interestingly, my onboard GPS and race box didn't capture data right at the traps, probably because of interference, and the Sky RC unit topped out at 224 miles an hour. But the official trap system doesn't lie and the number they read out was simply mind-blowing. So that was just day one of Ross Around 3, an incredible start, and already a new world record, but things weren't done yet. There were still two more days to go, and plenty of drama ahead. And that's all coming up in part two. Plus, I'm going to tell you what's coming next for The Beast and the Steve Eng channel. For my next trick! So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. And it also helps the channel out. Oh my god, new world record! <laughs> 